Brought to you by PrayLatin.com, makers of prayer cards featuring complete English phonetic renderings of Latin pronunciations. We are witnessing a rising tide of secularism in the world today, and the forces of Satan being openly arrayed against the church. They can smell weakness, and I, smell is an unfortunate sort of way of describing what, you're, what I'm about to show you here. We go here to Twitter, to Catholic Arena, which, if you're not familiar with that, uh, that outlet, they are a news site. They just promote news from France, where else? Because, of course, bad things happen to churches a lot in that country. So they say, two churches in Strasbourg were covered in solid human waste last night. This was posted on the 26th, so yesterday. So this would have happened the night of the 25th in France. The parishes are St. Pierre Le Vieux and St. Jean churches. They were smeared with solid human waste as attacks on French churches become more regular and more sinister, and I would add, more overt. I've reported to you several times in the last year that we have seen in the United States statues defaced by opponents of the faith. We have seen Churches entered in illicitly, tabernacles taken, sometimes just the contents of the tabernacles taken. The followers of Satan and all their guys, whether it's some person who overtly admits that they are either worshiping the devil or trying to mock Christians with what they consider to be fake worship of the devil. They'd be wrong, it's not fake, even if they think they're being fake. Or whether it's the uh, a competing religion that Pope Francis wants to keep making friends with from the Holy Land, because they are followers of Satan too. Sorry, for those of you who, for whatever reason, think that, that we worship the same God with them, they deny the Trinity, they deny the divinity of our son, they, or of his son, they deny his sacrifice on the cross, they deny the triune nature of God. It's not the same religion. It's not the same God. It just, it, it just isn't, by definition, cannot be. But they are all feeling emboldened in our time to such a degree that it's that the that they are really not hiding their intentions anymore in the secular world. And I'm going to give you an example of this from a completely different kind of story. We have to be pretty careful with this one. This goes to our Sunday Visitor, which is a modernist news outlet, but sometimes but they do some good reporting there. But they are they're not like the National Catholic Reporter. They're more like American Magazine, where yeah, it's pretty easy to see their bias, but it's not its not as in your face as National Gathering Reporter. From OSV, the headline is, Swiss Bishop warns that self-destruction capsule is dangerous as American woman passes away in one. I remember when this was kind of a joke on the show Futurama 20 years ago or something. It's a cartoon. It takes place in the year 3000, and they had these kind of things in it. It was kind of a De, uh, kind of a subtle way of pointing to moral degradation in the culture and where it was going to lead. Well, it didn't take a thousand years to get there. It took 20. Uh, that's a bit faster. And then it was not surprisingly an American who went there. And I'm not surprised either that this has gotten the backlash it has gotten, but I want you to know the bishop here, how he frames why this is bad, because a bishop is the one who responds. And yes, saying it's bad, good, great start. Your eminence, love to see that. But see how he frames this. This because this becomes a much bigger issue that goes to show you the effect of a destroyer pope. One who is either overtly an agent of the devil, which I don't think so. I, I was having a conversation in the in the live chat with uh with a viewer before we started, and it was saying, they were saying they don't understand how Pope Francis, a man of his age, could be working, promoting evil as overtly as he is, without realizing that he will be making meeting his maker soon. He will stand in judgment before our Lord. I'm going to remind you of what I told them, and I've said this many times on this channel. The modernists are true believers. They believe that the church has been wrong going back to almost antiquity. That somewhere along the line, the Catholic church became rigid and clericalist, and that God sent them to fix his church. That's why they love St. Francis of Assisi so much, because they know St. Francis of Assisi was a reformer. They espouse something that is almost like a Catholic-sounding version of the Babylonian captivity error. You know what the Babylonian captivity error is? It's something 
you see Protestants say, there are some Protestants who believe that the Catholic Church was the church founded by Christ, but that it defected from the faith. That Constantine essentially took the church over and pushed it along to create a bunch of errors and that it promoted errors on its own up until today. And that it was that for 1500 years, basically, there was that, the, that there was no visible church. That's what they believe. That it was Luther and Zwingli and Henry VIII and all the rest of them that finally fixed Jesus's church. That turns Jesus into a liar and it's on its face nonsense. But that is what they believe. And the modernists believe something very similar. They believe in the earliest days of the church, the church became rigid and clericalist and inward looking and all the rest of the stuff. And now it was their duty to fix it. And Jesus is so lucky to have had Vatican II to fix these errors. That's what they argue. Not in blunt terms like I did. And so watch how this bishop responds to this. Quote, Following the passing in of an American woman in a so-called self-destruction capsule in Switzerland and the arrest of several people involved in her passing, a Swiss bishop said the device is dangerous and that people who use the capsule should be deferred to palliative care instead. Swiss police have arrested several people after a controversial futuristic-looking Sarko capsule designed to allow its occupant to go through with removing themselves from this mortal coil was used for the first time, authorities said September 24th, according to CNN. Two days ago. Prosecutors in Schaffhausen, which borders Germany and is where the act took place, have opened criminal proceedings against several people for, quote, inducing and aiding and abetting the, self, the removal of a person by, the, by their own hand from this mortal coil, a police statement said. CNN reported that a spokesperson for the group behind the capsule, The Last Resort, said the deceased was a 64-year-old American woman who had been suffering from a severely compromised bodily defense system. Reacting to the news, the president of the Swiss Bishops' Conference, Bishop Felix Moore of Basel, told the Swiss Catholic media website, cath.ch, September 25th at the capsule, quote, makes self-removal too easy to assess. The capsule is dangerous because unlike other methods of doing this, a medical assessment is not required to the bishop whose diocese includes Schaffhausen. I would have directed the person in question towards palliative care, which has a holistic understanding of the person and looks at them in both their clinical and their psychosocial and existential dimensions, Bishop Gmore told Catholic.cath.ch web media website. Relatives also play an important role in ensuring that the desperate person does not see themselves as a burden and feels loved and supported, he said. Murr added that it is important to communicate with relatives and with a pastor, as well as to find out where hospices are available and how palliative and humane care is provided there. End quote. You know what was missing in that? Our Lord, the faith, how that is a sin that is generally unforgivable. We'll say generally because we don't know if at the very last moment. This is the, the, what has happened in the church and been slowly unfolding for decades, but really picked up steam once we stopped having a pope that was even remotely orthodox looking. Because Francis isn't even remotely orthodox looking when you actually pay any attention to him whatsoever. And that's symbolic of the great divide in the church today. Are you surprised about what happened in Switzerland? Are you surprised at all that that was the end result that we now live under a, in, in a world where because that happened there and the way it happened, it's likely to continue and eventually the Swiss authorities will make it legal and then you'll see it spread from there. It'll become a uh, human rights issue because that is how this stuff is framed now as a human rights issue. And of course, the key phrase there is human rights, because we talk all the time about the, the rights of man, but we never speak about the rights of God. To paraphrase, I think it was G.K. Chesterton on that note, or maybe Cardinal Newman, but the point stands. We hear so much about the rights of man, but very rarely do we hear about our duties to God. And the duties to God have been failed first and foremost by those in the hierarchy who are gradually and then not so gradually trying to change the faith to make it more palatable to the secular world, who believe that they are on a mission given to them from God to fix the errors of the church. 
That's why that's what makes them so dangerous. The modernists are true believers in their own errors. They truly believe that it is a divine mandate that they have. And also, please pray for everybody we spoke about today. Pope Francis was kind of the main subject of this. And the repose of the soul of that person, that they had the grace of final repentance in their last seconds, and all these other things. And as always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.